Debbie Romero is your host today on Transcend with Debbie and can be found on all platforms. She's a renowned international evidential psychic medium, Reiki master, Munike certified, and empowerment teacher who is holding space to bring awareness with other like-minded souls as we raise the vibration collectively for humanity with awareness, inspiration, love, compassion, and healing. Now your host, Debbie Romero. Hey, happy Wednesday. Welcome. As you can see, I have beautiful Patty Nagari in the house. Ah, I'm so excited. Welcome, Patty. And it is a huge honor to have you here on so many platforms right now. We are on Things Network. We're on Derek Akora's page. We're on Find Me a Medium and also Sacred Spiral. So shout out to my girl, Kelly Brickle, for producing and holding space for us back here today. And thank you for taking time for spirit and community to uh, share your love and passion for the work you do for the community. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is great. Ah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. I'm looking forward into opening up the platform for questions and also for those that maybe we we'll might pop in and do some readings for. You never know where we're going to go with that. So yeah. y'all be ready if you have some questions. Who doesn't want a reading from Patty, right? Like, I know I'm going to want a reading from Miss Patty. I'm like, Patty, can you read me, girl? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. things ahead of you. <laughs> you do. I love it. I love it. I'm taking it all. Taking it all in. Now, if for those that don't know who you are, would you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself and what you do? Not at all. I, I too, like you, I'm a psychic medium and I'm a witch. I am known as the good witch of Hollywood because I only work in the light and high vibration. Um, I've been talking to the other side since I could talk. I literally did my first seance when I was seven or eight years old. Um, I am probably best known. I've been on ghost adventures for the last almost nine years now, 2015, like two episodes a year for the last nine years, working with Zach and Aaron and the guys, always an adventure, always fun, always yeah you don't know what you're getting. Um, nice. But the last few years as well, I've been working a little bit with Jack Osborne and Katrina and Cordles to Hell and all my YouTubers. I love my YouTubers, Elton and Corey and the Overnight Crew, um, Gavin Magnus and all sorts of people. I, I love, like you, I love what I do. Uh, I have a school called University Magicus, an online spirituality school, which you should teach at, um, where we teach... Uh, I have paranormal people like Stefan Bugatti teaching psychic development, astrology, Reiki, new age, old age, witches, vampires, werewolves, and the like, all teaching different belief systems all in the light, um, but everywhere. And then my network, Paraflix. I, I'm one of the owners of Paraflix Network, and I put my podcast, my Witching Hour podcast up there as well as everywhere. So I, I run around a lot, and I have 31 um on the road trips this year so it's an honor to be sitting here in my house with you oh my gosh wow first off congratulations and everything you have done every impression that you left behind for all of us to follow the steps there's you're a huge matriarch in in our field and our work that we do and i mean just listening to everything that you've done in in your lifetime and who knows what other lifetimes you know and i love i, I love how you say we're here to bring awareness to different belief systems and holding space in the light. And I think that's important because it can also be very misunderstood. And so when you're saying that it's the light, you know, it's out of that magic of goodness and the, the Hollywood good witch, you know, like how awesome are you girl? Yeah. Take yeah. it. It's, um, again, and it's just who we are. It, and I, it, you know, our world's crazy now. We know that. And we need to bring in all the love, all the light we can. There's so much chaos, so much. So how we could shape that chaos. And there's a million ways to do it. Just find the one that works for you. Right. And, you know, we're, we're women in this industry. And you say the guys are fun. You know, they are fun. Oh, my God. They're really cool. Like, Jay, like, I love Jay. Jay was like, girl, you all right? I'm like, I'm like yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm good. 
<laughs> you know, when we're in that power and we're doing our work and, you know, they're fun and they're happy. And, you know, how, how do you hone in on your power, stepping in to their field and you're going to go into their paranormal world and, you know, a psychic medium, trusting your intuition and then using your dousing rods. How do you stand in that power of, of like, I got this and confidence? I got this. I think it's really good because it is, as you said, it is a boys club. Or even though there's people like you in it and me in it and Amy Rooney, Katrina, all the city Kesa, it's still a boys club. It is still a great big boys club. Maybe a team has one girl, one girl on the team, but not much. So I'm just honored to go, okay, let us bring this feminine energy in, whatever yeah. it is, even if she's the tech. Um, so I, I think it's it's what the industry needs. I think it's what everything needs. And it's true. I see people say, the, you know, when I'm there, the guys are different. It's different because we have to bring that balance in. So it, it's an honor to stand in my power. And like I said, you never know what you're getting with, you know, it's like, if I know where I'm going, they won't have me do anything intuitive or psychic. I'll say, this is what I experienced here. Or this is what I experienced here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm walking in blind. So that's just our years of trust of going, I don't, what if I get cricket? You never know, but yeah. so far, everything is like, oh yeah. my God, this happened here and this happened here. And, um, and again, with what we do with bringing in this spiritual magical aspect, it's not just, you know, K2 meters, which is great, you know, or EMF. It's like the heart, the soul, the, the yes. of it. Yes. And you really do embody that. For those who haven't had the opportunity to meet you in person, um, when you're on stage and you're given that opportunity to be a speaker and, and you can see the love and not only see it, but feel it. The empowerment of, of you holding space for the work that you do and you talk about the homes that you've gone into and you talk about the stories of those of the impressions that are left behind. Um, I'm sitting there in awe listening to you and, and, I, and I know how challenging it could be when we're getting the information, when we're holding space for something very traumatic, very deep. And, and I feel like, um, you know, we're, we're touching stuff that can be very heavy and very dense, but yet you still hold that light. And, and I feel it, you know, there's this misunderstanding dance between the dark work that they say dark or light, but it's all, we're holding space for a wound, right? Yes. We're holding space for a the wound. Work, whether yes. it's internet worldwide shadow work or individual shadow work. Yeah. Okay. What, um, how do you feel once your story is complete and you have the psychic investigation part done? You have the guys got their part of their history and then now the, the, it's a rap rap, you know, oh, it's a rap rap. We done. And you're like, OK, how do you feel after you've completed your your job in holding space for spirit? Um, well, it feels really good. And what feels really good, not, okay, we got a good show and we got these ghosts and we got this evidence. It's like, if you see one person, whether it's the cast or the crew or the special guest that week, or somebody's at the location, if you see a little light bulb turn on of, of a new thought, a new possibility, a new understanding, that is the payoff. I get somebody, I remember my first show I did way back in 2008, and it was a real Southern Bible Belt t show. And we're thinking that everything was evil and thinking it was everything. And, and I'm seeing like, oh, no, this is from love. This is light. This is positive. And, and seeing this little new possibility is the everything. I agree with you there. Um, what is your favorite show that out of all of them you've done? What is the st one story that stayed with you and left you in awe? Like, oh, wow. Um, well, I have so many, um, and, and sometimes it's the getting there. That's the crazy part. Like, right. you know, the, 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 the rental cars and the flights and the driving through the desert to the middle of nowhere and the scorpions yeah. and the javelina and the killer pigs. Um, I think, I think some of the wildest ones are when crazy, insanely crazy stuff happens. Um, um, but I think the darkest place I've ever been is the Cecil Hotel. And I've probably been yeah. there than anybody. I, we did a two-part ghost adventures there. I did a four-part TFIL overnight there. I just, I did a CW show there. And that park, that place needs cleansing so bad. I would love to gather every healer, oh, medium, oh. priest, rabbi, I don't care, holy person, Buddha, 
big hold hands and do a big kumbaya because you walk to that place and you get depressed. You're hopeless. And and sadly, they're moving in homeless and low income people and it's right. not going well. Um, so I think experiencing that and just trying to at least bring this little understanding and little light is it, it's very like we're stepping into a different world, a different world that needs help, that needs some light. Right. Uh, I, the wildest one, though, is really right here in my neighborhood. I was built doing a, a film. It was a documentary about this house. I live in the oldest neighborhood of the Hollywood Hills, under the H of the Hollywood sign. Built nice. in the 1920s, old movie star. There'd be a movie star mansion and then a little writer's cottage, a movie star mansion. I have one of the little writer's cottages. Um, but there's a house right around the corner from me built in the twenties by Charlie Chaplin for one of his many girlfriends. It was a total party house for twenties, thirties, forties. And they knew how to party. It was right. a, it was I a, know. Yeah. And so that can, you know, no judgments, but that can bring in some dark elements. It just can. Right. So it was that. And then they moved out. And then in the sixties, the Rolling Stones manager bought it. And so the stones stayed there. I'm seeing them tonight. Uh, Stone stayed there, right. moms and papas, Grand Parsons. So again, probably a big party house, creative, high vibration, big energy people. And then they moved out. And then the person who invented the, the real life sex doll moved in and house got too wacky for them. And then wow. they moved out. And then my neighbor, Marilyn Manson, moved in. <laughs> <laughs> there and did everything so this house has got insanely haunted insanely it looks wow. like it was built by masons because all the sacred geometry in it there literally is a compass painted in the floor on the entry entryway like for ritual for magic a four level spiral staircase leaded glass it's just beautiful and spooky Gorgeous. all at the same time yeah yeah um, but I, one kid, my one rule, whether we're doing an investigation or a seance or a gallery or one-on-one, -on -one, my one rule is you have to be respectful, period. Mm -hmm. I don't care who or what we're working with. Right. Nobody wants to be disrespected. And mm -hmm. this one kid got out of, out of hand and I, I, we were at a four camera shoot. We, everybody knew what they were in for, but all of a sudden this one, Cranky, cranky, big spirit. It wasn't demonic. I think demons give way too much credit. I think 90% of the time it's just cranky, cranky ghosts. They, they, they wish they I thought they were a demon, but no. But right. it was big in life, big in death. So fly, French doors flying open. Yes. Everyone's screaming. French oh. doors wow, I've never even seen this. And then this it's getting weirder and I'm trying to keep control. And then the speaker, like the speaker on an old record player came on. It sounded just like a spirit box, white noise. <sighs> we looked yeah. like it wasn't even plugged in. Oh, and it's, sure. growing, it's growing, but I'm feeling this tension and I'm feeling the room coming in. I go, this is not good. This kid said something really stupid and not him, but the cameraman facing him, one of the four cameras, he literally, Debbie, burst into flames. He literally, oh. like a V, wow. like angel wings of fire up his back. He was not standing in front of a fireplace or a candle. Every oh. camera actually caught it on camera. One camera started filming like the ceiling or the floor. You test the strength and metal of a camera person by a small room with a lot of people bursting into flames. Me, oh. people, which medium patty became the medic that i am i am an emt one certified cardiology tech you have to be in this world i am i'm like drop and roll i go into my head this is not okay i'm calling in my guardian shut this down this is not okay this is not right. okay it's not spontaneous yeah. combust i'm like ah i'm like shutting it down the guy we watched his shirt just poof off him it was cotton it should not have burned Insane. like a nylon or a thing i'm watching the blistering on his back i'm like this is not okay we're done we're done i've never stopped to shoot i've never we are we're done but the cameraman who was a super skeptic going he was so intrigued by spontaneously combusting like spinal tap he's like no i'm fine i'm okay um i have a sweater his shirt burned off I'll put the sweater on i'm looking at the blistering on his back i'm like i'm like no nah. Uh, well, no, I can't. You know, please, I'm okay. I can do this. Right. I knew the kid who caused it was no longer going to be trouble because he was in the corner and like not another. <laughs> I right. the spirit. I'm like, you can't do this. This is. We're not even going to get rid of you. We just want to communicate. He promised he would be sort of good, um, but so we picked it up and we did it. But more craziest poltergeist stuff. 
glass that came, nobody was in 15 feet, flew out of a cupboard across the room, shattered, tried to push that same cameraman off the cliff. I had to make him this little mojo protection bag. But right. the craziest stuff I have ever seen, and it's on film. But but the, the happy ending to this whole crazy of how, why we're trained and why we do what we do exactly. and why we work in the light and with spirit right. is that three weeks later, the cameraman, who was a, a movie maker in his own right, he goes, Patty, look at my back. And I look where all that blistering was across his back. And it totally looked like he had went and got a tattoo of a dragon. Wow. Sharp teeth, winged head into the shape of a serpent. Insane, that, Patty. That is the exact energy I called in to shut down the seance. I work dragon energy. I love I that. Beautiful dragons, crossroads, most magical, beautiful, fire-breathing beast. Yes. I am looking at his back and going, oh, my God. You have a tramp stamp of a dragon on your back. <laughs> That is the coolest <laughs> I have ever seen. That is like, I called that in. <laughs> he, he thought so too. He was so intrigued. He is no longer a skeptic. He yeah. literally, he, he wrote a movie basically about me, about this TV medium who does every TV show out there and mm -hmm. doing yet another reality show. And then a portal opens. It's called The Portal. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all hell breaks loose. But right. um, he wrote it. Stephen Norrington, the guy who wrote League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Blade series, like kind of weird, ho weird Hollywood royalty. They haven't done it yet. If they get around to doing it, I, I Margot Robbie, will you play? <laughs> Come on, Margot, girl. <laughs> play me. Um, but anyway, they haven't. But what I must say, and this is good for all of us who have podcasts and on YouTube and TV and everything. I sat down with him for five hours. And I, I, I'm we're looking at his script going, I, I go, oh, Lauren, you can't have an actor say that on camera. He's like, but you said that. I go, I know I said that. That is a sound that op does shifts energy. It opens up a portal. You don't want to be one of those cursed horror films, do you? It happens all the time. Spirits, energy, good or bad, don't know the difference of an actor saying lines in the middle of a ritual. Right as somebody really doing it, you, you know, you don't want to be one of those cursed houses where, you know, all the actors die at 27. Right? There's, it happens so often. And Hollywood is learning that. That's why they're using, uh, they're bringing in consultants like me all the time. Like, okay. Let's say a word that isn't going to open a portal. Hell, it'll sound as spooky or as mysterious or as magical, but it won't cause something because everything goes through film so if they do do it nobody's going to be hurt by being in it working on it or watching it right. and it's funny too so it's crazy too because there are some things that happen behind the scenes that don't make it to the film and so these type of stories that you're sharing some of these things that you experience as a medium a medium and you're holding space for it and, and it's happening that poltergeist of of experiences like you have to also anchor that power and hold space for the spirit to move for the energy to shift and i remember sitting there and i'm just like did that just happen did that just happen and, and the cameraman's still filming so everything is still a go while all that energy is moving it's oh, it's yeah. pretty intense and powerful when you're in that so man patty like hats off to you everyone that's in here that's listening to her thank you my friend like this is no joke this is her holding in the light and the anchor for the energy to move, for the healing of the story to be told. And, and you know, there's so much unfoldment of layers and layers that you're touching and you're going into and the experience to say, this is what I feel. This is what is happening. That This is what I'm experiencing. It takes a real talent and a real to be really attuned to that frequency and energy to bring forward those evidence and to work with other team members. like. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being a service. And you know, we got a lot of people in the house. We have Cheyenne. They're like, whoa, these stories. You got Helen Smith. I don't know if you could see the comments on the right I side. Like, yeah, and I, hi, but for those that are in here, you know, have any questions for Patty, myself, like you guys have an open floor. We're here for you. Um, we're here about empowerment. We're here about, you know, you're a woman of ritual, of of also affirmations. And I, you know what I love? I love when you talk about 
the affirmations of your health and to be healthy because it's all about affirmations and putting it into the universe. And, and if you want to share a little bit about that, like to help make movement for us and, you know, what is a great way for someone who's starting their journey um, and they're wanting to work in this energy, but they're nervous, like what affirmation would you give them to stay in their power? Okay. The first thing is look at fear differently, not fear like somebody putting a gun at you, but fear can freeze us in our tracks. Fear can make us not make that phone call, not ask for a raise, not tell somebody how we feel, whether to ourselves or not. Fear can make you catatonic or fear is a million dollar industry that we are both in with the paranormal. We right. people will pay money to get scared, to ride a roller coaster, to, to, to watch ghost adventures to watch scary movies and because that seems like I'm so scared. I'm going to ride the roller coaster should be, right. I'm so scared and I'm going to come out of my comfort zone and I'm going to do this and make this happen. Right. Um, and so that's the, so that is what me, I, I've, I've always been, I've been living a magical life since I could, but I was that same seven year old doing seances was picking herbs in my little suburban backyard, stuffing them in my mom's wallet, knowing what would bring her money, even though she just thought it was dirt and weeds. So like, no, this is rosemary. This will bring you money. No, this is mint. Um, but I've all, I've, I've always hold on to my power. This is our realm. We have the power to do, but um, I found out when I was 15, I, my mom had taken a drug they gave to pregnant women in the 50s and 60s and early 70s under the false belief that it prevented miscarriages. But they knew from 55 that it didn't work before my mom ever took it. But it became the first big pharma drug. Take this, have a healthy baby, even though they knew it didn't work. But neither here nor there. Um, they thought I was fine until I hit 15 and then all these female issues. Basically, I was 50 on the outside, menopausal woman who had never started a menstrual cycle, nine on the inside, which started 15 years of surgeries and this and that. So by the time I was third in emotional, physical, spiritual, lupus, fibromyalgia, every, every autoimmune disease, all you guys have autoimmune diseases, you can get rid of them like that. It's balance. It's just balance. But anyways, though, all my magical belief system, I, I became victim to this. So between 15 and 30, by the time I was 30, my doctor, who I had a great doctor, she goes, Patty, you've been so off with this hormonal and all this. You have a tumor in your head. It's pushing, causing blindness on your eye socket. You have, you, you have such severe osteoporosis. You have five fractures in your spine already. You have the bones of an 80 year old at 30. And I was a dancer and you have all that cancerous damage of all your female things and 20 times the chance of breast cancer at 30. And she's like, if you make it to 50, which you probably won't, but if you make it to 50, you're going to be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And I, I just said, no, no, I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm, I believe in magic. I'm a manifester. I'm affirmation. I'm a witch. Everything else I do in my life, I haven't been sick since I was 30, Debbie. I gave up getting sick. All that. I used to have to carry Medrol dose packs in case I swole up with it. Um, I just, I'm not even COVID. I don't get sick. So at 50, I, at 50, long time ago now, instead of being dead or in a wheelchair as promised, I'm like, I want to show myself and the world that we, whatever we believe in, we can do, we can do. I, I believe off that mind, body, spirit that that 200,000 books are written on. In witchcraft, it's creation, working, dispatch, same thing. You'll never surpass your thought pattern. You have to believe. Whether right. it's love spell working or I'm going to be healthy, I can get rid of this cancer or whatever. My body, right. we have to take action. We have to get off the couch. Spirit. That's the that's tangible, but that's the battery that makes it happen. That could be through faith. Go to church and pray. That could be from vision boards and affirmations. It could be spells right. and things. But you guys could all look at whatever you've accomplished in your life. You believed you could do it and that you deserved it. That's a big one. You've gotten off the couch and taken action. And number three, you've had some sort of faith or magic belief behind it. Right. But if you haven't quite done one or two of those needs tweaking. You maybe you don't really believe it or you can't see it or you haven't taken the action. But so at 50, I'm like, I haven't got sick in 20 years. I live in the middle of Hollywood. I'm, I'm an entertainment girl from way back. I'm like, I'm going to do the world's hardest obstacle course, physical obstacle course. I remember this. Yes. So literally auditioned for Wipeout. That's the one with the big balls. I have pictures of it up over my head. Yeah. 
And I beat like 100,000 people, 100, people using positive thinking, positive magic, positive craft, all positive. And, and then to do the hardest, scariest, most painful thing I've ever done, most empowering. And I beat people, most of them were half my age and somebody who was supposed to be dead or in a wheelchair. And you had to go through physicals and psychological. Yeah. And so, so yeah, we can do whatever. And then I went, okay, I have to prove it's not, I did the physical. I have to prove this is not a fluke. What else can I prove to myself? And then anybody I work with, my clients, my students, that we still can, there's the sky's the limit. Our own right. limits are, well, what else can I do that I'm not good at? <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, they won't let me in the kitchen. I can't cook. My, I, <laughs> me either. <laughs> I can't cook. I'm going to cook for Gordon Ramsay. I'm going to get on Master Chef. I remember yeah. that too. Same thing. I beat way over 100,000 people. I use magical cooking about the energy you put into your food. Yes. Which way you stir, which way you do. You know, I totally played the witch card. Gordon Ramsay is afraid of ghosts. Just say. <laughs> um, but I, and I've like, I, I, I beat a hundred, two hundred thousand people who knew how to cook. I don't know what saute means, so the odds were like limitless. And then I go, okay, I did that again. That was the scariest wipeout, being in that Master Chef kitchen, going, "What am I doing?" Okay, I embrace fear because I'm scared to death. Yes, I love it. I yes, embrace yes. fear. And I'm like, okay, one more time, one more time. Okay, what am I getting? I have absolutely no business doing, no right doing. I want to prove it's not something I'm good at. And I was watching America's Got Talent. And they, they shoot right here at the Dolby. I'm like, I remember. I, I was a dancer. I can't do it. I'm going to get on America's Got Talent. I'm going to use my my manifestation, my craft to do. Um, yes, cooking is magic. In yeah. That's lead, lead with energy. She's a beautiful soul. Lead cooking with energy. So, yeah, that's right. And Miss, our girl, Miss Raven Wolf is here too. So hey, hey, Raven, I love you, you, my beautiful friend. Yes, love but it's so, true. So you, know, yeah. you're, you put a lot of steps forward to, to manifest and to create. We do it afraid. My family from the other side, I cook. You know, I just stop cooking. So they always come in to help. Spirit comes in to help. And my my grandmother, my mother was like, girl, you need to cook. Let's make, let's get you in the kitchen. And I love how you're creating the manifestation and bringing the energy into everything you're doing. Not just the food you eat, not just the way you're physically um, embodying spirit because you're inviting them to be with you. I'm okay. I'm not going to be sick. My body is healthy. I'm not taking your diagnosis. Let me keep moving forward. But you yeah. still incorporated a doctor. You were realistic. I did, I did. I did what the doctor said to do. Right. I walked, I did all the stuff, I went medicines and this and that, nothing drastic. I guess you have to, it has to be mind, body, spirit. If there's good medicine to take, you take the good medicine. I, I do want to address Chrissy right there. She said, yes. I need no fear potion. It's not no fear. It's embrace the fear. Yes. It's thinking in a good way. It, I mean, that's what people do, adventure travel and all that. But just remember that all the good stuff is the scary stuff. All the good stuff is the stuff that's outside of that comfort level, whether it is making a phone call or telling somebody how you feel or trying something that you're scared to do. It is right. the most satisfying office. So you don't have to look at it, no fear. It is fear. It's getting excited by the fear. I agree. I've done so many things scared. I'm like, okay, I'm in this. And my friend's like, well, spirit wouldn't put you in it if you weren't ready, Debbie. I'm like, okay, I'm here. And you said it, right. You know, yes, I, you're doing this story, you're investigating, but you had to go through the desert. You had to go on a plane. You got to go through all the energies before you get there. And and then on top of that, you got to drive through pigs in, in this middle of nothing and you have to know direction. You know, there's a lot of foundation work that has to be done before you even get to the story. And then your body as a medium now you're like, okay, I'm I'm attuning to spirit now. Let's go. And you just, you're like, let me first wipe this dirt off from the from the desert that I felt, you know, by the pigs and the cows and all that. Like it's right. embracing it all. Oh, embracing so it all. And I am always yeah. scared. I am I am scared every TV show I do. I am scared when I walk on a stage to do mediumship gallery. I am scared when I sit around my dining room table to do a little tiny seance. Right. Not scared like, but I just, because I so want to give my best. I so want to do this. So again, embrace it. It's like, right. I'm so scared. Yes. <sighs> and there is always a moment of, why am I doing this? Because I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, let's go. And then when you're done, you're like, yeah, right yeah. on. Like, that was so cool. And the energy does uplift us. And so let's see what other questions here that we have. 
Oh, uh, Miss Kelly Brickle, we got a little, oh, let me see if I can take this person out here really quick. Miss Kelly Brickle, we can watch there. Let's see. She says she loves that. Anybody have questions for Miss Patty Nagar Nagari? I, don't know about Angry. 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 I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to do that. I knew it. It's okay. It's I've been called worse, but it, it, I for my entire life, my birthday Negri, I've always got rhymes with nothing. Oh, no. Nothing. I, <gasps> okay. Let's see. So people either they're drawn for a reading, or if anybody has any questions specifically, Paula's asking, "Do you see me heading in the right direction?" Paula Marie Munoz. We're always in the, we're never in my, in my sense, we're never in the wrong. Everything's a lesson. Everything's an experience. So we're never in the wrong direction. So, you know, Miss, what would your, what would your um, response be to something yeah, like that? Yeah, what what I, I'm saying is Paula, go in the direction that you want. And that's, I mean, that you're trust that intuition. That's what, again, this is about, we've been by rote for so long doing what we were supposed to do this and forgot that intuition trust your intuition and and go where you're being drawn i yes you're going in the right direction but it doesn't have to be a straight line right everybody thinks i and i i say this often lately we don't have to be on the interstate highway going dee, 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 like straight like this we could take right. the scenic route sometime right. and you can look at how many careers i've had i've taken the scenic route and it's just right. everyone added to everyone added to everyone not right. this got in the way of that and then the way of this it's that expansion which is what we need to do now so yes carry on and follow your passion passion it's so true passion. i think because we do manifest and because we do put our intentions out there some people think is there more to do to get to right where i want to be i want to be in that manifestation i want to be in the moment i want to experience it and sometimes what we forget the destination and, and all the experience that come with it, you're in it. And it's all leading you to the path of where you want to go. It's building your energy up to get you to that place. So for sure, we're always in the right place. Right. Um, okay. that's you're not a curb driver. I, I would read Paula. She said, I'm a curb driver. You're not a curb driver. That means you go up on the curb. I do that way too. You're a curb <laughs> driver. Me too. Yeah. I love that. I, I'm the girl that would be up the curve. I, I'm the girl that went up with the tire and hit this, you know, went yeah. up the sidewalk. I was like, oops, did I do that? It's, it, it's true. Lisa's saying trusting your intuition is everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know that Nancy was asking for us to touch more on fear. So there was Nancy here. She was saying, can you talk more on overcoming fear? So it's doing it afraid, right? Um, is there a mantra that you would say or you can give that that you would suggest for someone? I do a lot with balance because I think that the whole world is out of balance. That's why I came up with my 30 second. Wait, that's my emotions. That's out of balance. That's my water element. Run your hands underwater. Oh, wait, that's my air element. I'm not thinking straight. I'm foggy. That's my air element. Do some deep breathing. Oh, wait, I'm not feeling grounded. That's my earth element. You know, hug a tree or grab something wood. Oh, wait, that's my fire. There's too much. I'm angry. There's too little. I'm lethargic. If you can't dance around a bonfire, do some sound, some zzz, some serpent breathing and things like that. Right. So it, when you get more balanced, because when you're too much of anything, it, it doesn't. So try to keep the balance. And then again, it's 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 when you feel the fear, you have that choice right then and there to let it stop you or freeze you or jump in. It's like jump in the pool. Jump in the pool. And every time you do it, you're going to go, oh, my God. Number one, I survived. Number two, the world didn't stop rotating. Number three, this was kind of great. And number four, look at the results I got. And even if you fail, because sometimes you jump in the pool and wait, there's no water. That's okay, too. Again, we, you know, every self-motivation book out there, it's like you fall down, you get up. You fall down, you get up. But you just keep running. Right. And, and fear it causes this adrenaline thing that you could use to direct and create and get do magic with that fear. Exactly. Yes. There's magic in all this energy that's amplified, right? So how will you use that for a benefit? Like how, and I was, I love that you say that. I, and I think um, we underestimate what comes to the surface. There's energy in all of that and making it into a positive flow. I mean, definitely absolutely love it. She's saying this, this is helpful. Thank you. Thank you guys for holding space. Thank you for being here. And I love, absolutely love this conversation. And you see women can do it. Y'all we're, we're 
doing in the boys club, but we're still doing it. And we're Miss Patty it. be holding holding space in a, in a beautiful way, right? So it, this is I, it's, it's amazing. Um, I don't understand my spiritual path because when somebody asks me something, I can't answer them. But if I hear somebody just saying something, then I can get a message. And that's why is that? Do you think? So it's almost like how you have to pause and you are tuning your energy to it. What would you say, Miss Patty, to this question? Yeah. I would say it probably sounds like a trust thing. You, we do. I talk a lot left brain, right brain, left logical. One plus one equals two. We need that logical brain. That's how we get to work. Stop it, red light. The right is our that intuitive, spiritual, creative, artist side. We have to trust that. So spiritual past ask you something, you throw that over to your left brain, and then try to analyze it. Therefore, you're throwing it down a rabbit hole. Just trust what comes out. Just trust what comes out, and then use your brain to like decipher it a little bit. Not like the spies are greed and whatever. Um, I think yeah. it's just trust. And you know, if you need yeah. to do it in baby steps, do it in baby steps. You need to do it all in once. Just I agree. Get a circle. Find some people you could practice with. Really, Patty has her magic class. You can jump in one of her circles, her teachings, her, yes. her courses that she offers, the paraclips. Yeah. Crazy. crazy. Well, yeah. Raven we, here's here. She's one of our teachers. Um, yeah. It works at the school. She's a beautiful teacher. We teach mediumship. Yeah psychic development spell casting um again astrology reiki everything down the line familiar right. work and it's right. crazy cheap twenty dollars or less if you do more right that. i remember and raven's in here too so you guys um follow P um, patty's uh website you can follow her as her website is being given you'll be able to go into her website see the courses see what she's doing where she's at i mean constantly she's got 31 visits in the year already put out on her website i was like good luck girl you go ahead with your bad self like yes but i'm home in july yay <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, um, as Liz says, she's loving this. I'm loving this. And it's important when we're coming together to hold space to answer questions, right? Um, do you feel you're, are you guided now? Let's go in and see if anybody wants some readings. Let's see who's open. Let's see first who's here because people will be popping in and out. Um, let's give some hellos. Also, shout out to Find Me a Medium, Things Network, Sacred Spiral, and Derek Accor's page. And to each and every one of you for showing up every Wednesday to listen and tune in to our special guest that we have. So we have Jennifer Open, uh, Raven saying, I love working at the University of Magic with Patty. Uh, she's awesome, you guys. You got to definitely follow her. Um, and I'm going to let you, Patty, when you say you're open now, open to what question or Patty, if you feel drawn to say something specific to someone, um, I, I'm going to follow your lead here. Okay. What, what on these quickie little readings, like right now, somebody just being open is way too open for me. Right, like I was thinking sure. that if you say, um, I would like something about career or something about love, or I want to talk to my grandpa, Bob, I, if you make it a little that we could just go in one door, otherwise. Got it. So now that you guys heard her, uh, let's say specifically career, love, marriage, family in heaven, the spirit world, a uh, paranormal question, um, what devices to use? You have Erica Neva saying career, please. Career, please. Hi, Erica. Okay. You have to, what I'm saying about you is you, I, you don't have blocks in your path. You just don't see things big enough. You don't see things clear enough. Like I said, you have to smell it, taste it and see it and create it. You're very visual, I'm getting. So you need to visually see what you want that path to look like, how far you want to go with it. And again, my thing now is about passion, trusting your intuition and following your passion in whatever you're doing. But I just get more than anything that you need a clear vision and you need to, to a little more faith, a little more faith that you can have that you can get there. I don't know. What do you get, Debbie? I get be more direct with your intent. What do you want? What do you want? And I know she's, I know her. So I know that she's very open. I know she's very gifted and you're right. She's very clairvoyant. So she's your, yeah, see, she's very visual. So you were on point when I was like, Oh yeah, girl. And so what I got was um, your baby's dad in spirit was coming in to help you. So he's been directing you and I feel like you communicate with him. And I just feel like he's like, go for the goal. It's almost like you're almost there. Like, you know how when we're racing and they give you that little um, golden ri ribbon to run through, it's like, girl, break the tape and get through it. I feel like um, December last year they gave me a, an intent here like you made an intention to change things to be more visual to to be seen and so trust that you want to be seen you're ready to do the work you're ready to be acknowledged so i say keep going is what i get for her yeah i, I agree i agree yeah. 
I'll let you pick the next one, Patty. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay. Ah, they go so fast with my little funny eyes. <laughs> She's like, what? yes. Uh, they do go fast. We're about 40 something people in here. So you guys be patient with us. Okay, let's look at Alexandra Fry. Um, yes. Should I trust the opportunity presented to me or avoid it and move on? Let's look at the opportunity presented to you. And number one, my first answer is or anything that either of us say is you probably know the answer inside of you. Um, what I'm getting is that there, the opportunity does have some really good aspects to it, but there's something something that's not right. It definitely mm -hmm. needs adjusting, if that makes sense, or redesigning by you. Um, uh, I get that there is true opportunity there, but some, something smells funny in Denmark, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got to do your homework. It, it's, it's not ready for what it is. You have to orchestrate it better yourself. I hope right. that makes sense. Does that make sense? What do you, what are you getting? You know what I'm getting is that there's a lot of healing still to be done. Trust. I heard immediately. Yes. Trust what you're getting. As Patty says, you have to go within and fill within what, if, what, how that feels for you. But I feel that your energy stand back. So which means is that you stepped away from the situation. So your energy is pulling from it, which is not allowing it to take its course. So if you're taking a step back because it made you nervous, as Patty said, something is not funny. Something is funny in Denmark. So you were able to fill into something here that didn't feel right. I got healing. Let it heal. If you're working with the color green, if you're doing candles, light a green candle. If you're wanting to make an affirmation, ask spirit to bring it to you clearer. In my mind, I'm going to see this. I'm going to feel it. And I'm going to know exactly how to move forward with this. So now make the intent to change what you're filling into in a different way so it can come to you in another way is what I'm getting. So Patty, on, spot on, Patty. Perfect. You're too spot on. Somebody just, how could I, somebody, I want to, but how could I keep getting messages from spirit? Ask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen, listen, take the time to calm, get out of the chatter. I have a technique I call dream school, which is, it's in my book, Old World Magic, but it's literally putting a glass, a glass, glass of water by the side of your bed. We know water is magic. All what science right. is doing with it changes the molecular structure, words and loves and love, for, but we are 60, 70% water, putting a glass of water by the bed and charging it with um, I want to get messages from spirit. I want to talk to my guides or what is the meaning of life or what outfit should I wear? You will get it in dream time or in just downloads because what it is, is you're giving the universe, God, God's spirit permission to download you while you're asleep. And, uh, you know, that chatty, judgmental, logical left brain isn't in the way. That's it. And then you wake up in the morning, write it down really quick, whatever that is. It's a way to, you will keep getting messages and then you'll get used to it and start trusting it better. Dream school. I, I have videos on it too. It's in my book. Yeah. You have two books. You have your, your, uh, my original ahead, one that bestseller five centuries old world mad this is a super easy book you could read it really fast i spent more time unwriting it and it's literally like life hacks like you don't have time for an hour to meditate here's 30 second exercise like i was talking before run your hands underwater basic spell casting basic everything why you put salt in your bathroom goofy things like that that are super life hacks this i would recommend to advance people and beginners. My yeah. new book out, which is a collaboration book, Women Gone Wild Into Woo! Congratulations. That's what's up. Amazing yeah. women from all over the world. It's not, it's I'm just one chapter. It's 20 of us with one chapter. We just did a big book launch in New York. We just did a big book launch in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's medical doctors. It's all women, but our experience of intuition, this is the most, they're calling it the chicken soup of the soul for intuition. Yes. It's what the world needs when whatever your belief system. So this one you could buy everywhere, Target, Barnes and Noble, online, Amazon, Women Gone Wild, intuition. There's a money thing that I'm not, their last book was money. This one's intuition. But mm -hmm. again, to me, that's what's about trusting. Right. Definitely trust. Definitely trust. And I just turned it, I have a new book, but not out for a while. I just finished a book um, turning in the last drop on haunted dolls because mm -hmm. Bell made me write it. And uh, magical puppets, because I'm as a magical practitioner, we work with puppets and magical little dolls. So right. it's going to be the two sides of the paranormal side of the care and feeding of haunted dolls. And then magical puppets use 
for health and magic and wellness. Yeah. I love that. And you know, I want to go back as you say that um, Raven here, lead with energy wanted to know, do you have a good mojo bag that you can give for those that are listening for good luck? What would you suggest as a good mojo bag for us to work with? I know there's so many comments that come in hot, but um, that one stood out to me as you talked about all the good stuff that you're creating. Right. Something just fell down my back. Uh -huh. book book. Um, well, well, with stop it. Stay. Sorry. <laughs> Something at me. Um, from luck, I would I like to put talismans in things. I yes. There it is calling. Spirit is calling. And this is the one that it's my old landline. It's completely haunted. It says muted right there. And it said silenced right there. I love it. And I'm going to hang up on it. Okay. So, so I, first, I, would, I, would, I, I like to combine a little bit of everything. Um, I think for luck, I would, I, I feel a little Irishy for that. I'm not that I'm Irish. So do something with green. If you can find yourself a four-leaf clover, put yourself a four-leaf clover. If you can't find yourself a clover or a three-leaf, do a little drawing of a clover. Do like a lucky horse show. Do some if if that relates to you. You have to with what relates to you and your mm -hmm. cosmology belief system. I would put in all sorts of fresh, beautiful herbs and things that just make me feel lucky and stepping into it. I would use some stones um, that have some high vibration to them that because luck is, is an energetic thing i on every day of the day i would use something different because i would also look into the moon cycle of things but more than anything else work with what luck means to you amen to, rose that. Yes. Mean rose to you great if rose quartz doesn't mean lucky it, well this has always been lucky for me before it could yeah you know, anything that it is we're creating what that is put your breath into it whatever's in your mojo bag whatever if felt or old scarves you're making it from or again little magical pockets remember to put your intention your breath when you breathe yes. into something that is your life force that is your yes no matter what's in them maybe you want a little fiery stuff put a little cinnamon into it there's a lot of stuff in your kitchen cover basil is good rosemary i put to because that enhances everything i'm a big dragon's blood because that increases everything but mm -hmm. i can do it for three days but just what what does feel lucky to you that is the best thing to put in it i agree you know her mother and spirit was i know raven her mother and spirit was stepping down and they were showing me a tree a tree specifically where your nephew plays by they're showing me leaves and so i saw the dirt and it's like get the little bit of the earth you know keep you grounded use the leaves so you're grounding in that luck so don't forget to ground in all that intent of goodness because you just had us up there with the fairies and all the mystical energy of magic and then it's like let's also keep that in that earth supported so that's what i was getting for you raven beautiful job miss patty i love the herbs i love the medicine um crystals my mother used to carry a four leaf clover and she would carry it and, and i know when she passed i got all her little her little things that you know we all we all hold on to things that have special meanings for us and so you said it perfectly what calls your spirit what is your spirit being drawn to tells me you know like what it what ignites that that feel good feeling right yeah, right and i do want to comment liz going lucky peak panty undies under your change your underwear change your life i have a line of power patty's power panties and we have luck panties i saw that they are, we have power we have health we have wealth we have passion we have dragon they have sigils on them because i work with a lot of sigils so i will put sigils on things like here's your lucky like horseshoe or or spare sigils but panties i've been doing this with movie stars for 20 years like wear this color blue panties or wear this color yes. green picture this sigil picture this word yes. and now with print on demand if you go to my website everybody for the, the least expensive part of your wardrobe you could have luck panties power panties into right. panties and if you use the code code patty you get 25 percent off so I, make I love this i'm gonna i i absolutely love this power because patties, you're, sh you're showing them how to use magic with everything that we use every every time you put them on every time you go to the, the, the little ladies room you're reminding yourself you have this magic we have men's styles women's styles high tops yoga pants yeah. Patty, again, what's your website, Miss Patty? Pattynegri.com. And from there, you can get to my YouTube, and which I have a thousand videos on. You can get to my Instagram, patty.negri. You can get to my 
my various Facebook, the various, the hackers are gone, but I don't have access. So Patty Negri Psychic Medium or my new Patty Negri Official, I just started two days ago. Um, my cat was able to open up a new case book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice it's so okay. good. Hey, it's all good. I love it when spirit calls. I absolutely love it. Well, I really definitely appreciate you spending your time here on Transcend with Debbie. It is an honor and a privilege to have you hold space for the community and sharing your paranormal experience, your empowerment, the women empowerment, and just bringing forward that good luck, that happy joy and a light. Um, you really do embody it. Thank you so kindly for being here. Y'all hold on. Miss Patty's going to step away. because She's got another show to do. So we say thank you. Thank you. And thank you for what you do, Debbie. You are bringing the light. You are bringing this awareness. You are bringing this magic. Thank you. So my it's an honor for me to be on it with you and your magic. So thank you. I adore you. Thank you so kindly, everybody. Say goodbye to Miss Patty. I'm going to still be here. We appreciate your time. Take care, love. Bye. Bye. I get my website, my my podcast. Bye. Yes, she took time to miss her podcast to be here. Like, how awesome was that? I absolutely loved it. So she has a show at twelve, and she was able to move so she could be here for each and every one of you. So shout out to Derek Chorus Page. Shout out to Things Network. Find me a medium and Sacred Spiral, my girl Kelly Brickle. Thank you for managing everything, and I'm still gonna be here for you guys. Like my energy is just like vibrating. How are you guys doing? Are you like vibrating? Is your energy like? fire oh my god it was amazing right cheyenne amazing and so like as i say this i just want to say thank you guys for showing up for the guests because each guest takes time out of their busy day they take time out of their schedule to share their knowledge to share their love right and, and, and we do this every week for you guys and for spirit so as you have me as we're going to sit here for the maybe the next 10 15 minutes any questions for me and i'm just going to kind of see where i'm guided to any specific questions as well for you guys i'm gonna put my fancy glasses on here Hi, Casey. Shout out to you, Debbie. I'll take it, Miss Etika. Fire vibes, right? Eva, she is fire. Like, my energy was just like, whoa, it was insane. She is the best. Oh, Miss Kelly was tricking us. Yes, she is the best. I mean, and, and Raven Wolf, I met Raven as well, and she works with Patty. Um, you're going to find some amazing guests popping in here that are just going to continue to hold space for you guys. Hi, Laura Love. Thank you for being here. Um, let's go ahead. Let's see where I'm going and see if anybody has any specific questions for me as well. So we'll keep this message going. The message is flowing and let's go. Will I ever be able to move on? Amanda, yes, we always do. Every day is a different day, right? So our thoughts create change daily, second, minutes. So yes, babe, we are moving and we are creating the shifts that we want with our thinking. As Patty says, it's all within the mind, right? Our mind creates that movement. It creates the change. So yes, babe, we're always moving. Maybe we're not moving in the direction we would like, but I want to give you the word hope and I want to give you the word love and I want to give you understanding. So sometimes we don't understand things and why they're happening. But if we can stay in that power and clarity, we can invite spirit closer to bring that message next. So it's like it's unfolding the onion, right? So you get the one layer and you're like, OK, I feel this. Then you're getting the next layer and you feel this. So sometimes you're just getting the piece of the story, not the entire story. So ask for the next message to come in to show you if this would make sense. Thank you so much. Keeping the vibe high. Exactly, Rachel. It's so cool. Stay or let go. I feel like letting go is always important, um, Laura. So I feel like your heart let go stands out to me the strongest. But I feel like this is in reference to relationship. I feel like this is in reference to um, people. And I just feel like when we're letting go, or doesn't mean, and this is beautiful right here. This is what spirit's making me feel into the beauty of this is that when we let go, we think we're really letting go of the person. Sometimes we're letting go so new things can unfold. So we're letting go of what has already happened, but we're also allowing the new energy to come in, which can shift the person or can shift the energy. So when people are saying we're cutting cords, doesn't mean necessarily that you're cutting cords, you want nothing to do with them. It means that you're letting go of the energy, something more beautiful can trans uh, go into transformation for you, if this would make sense. So great question, Laura. I hope that makes sense. Your guys' energy is fire. Will I be able to get back to a stable of my mother's house? My brother tried to steal it. 
I feel like Lisa, when I tap into that, I feel like you let go of that a couple years ago. I feel like you made a, a decision about three or four years ago to say, you know what, I'm not going to argue with this. I'm just going to let it be. So it's like if your mom were to come in and she's like, you know, you, there was jewelry, there was things that you really wanted and you went through a grieving stage already with it. And it's like, why bring up that past? Continue your journey forward, right? And give yourself an opportunity to just allow the healing to naturally transpire. I know that you're concerned for another sibling here and I know that you're trying to bring balance for everybody so trust the process i say there's a gentleman that either legally you're going to be working with and i feel a lot of gold energy around that yes but now he he passed god bless you well there is a man that's coming in that's going to help you with this so i know that your brother passed but i know that you also have another sibling yes is this correct because they're making me feel like you're trying to bring balance. I feel like you're trying to bring balance within the family. And so there is a man who's who's handling the legal matters that is going to make me that makes me feel like yes, you're going to have it resolved. I hope that helps. Yes, thank you. So I not, I don't want to leave you with that. Okay. Could I have a reading please? Let's see who else is still here. Getting my own apartment this year. Nat is it Natalie? have a reading will i be getting my own apartment it does it feels a lot of doubt i feel your doubt babe and so you know if we're tapping back into what patty says believe that it's going to happen right believe that it's going to happen so awesome i love that and so when i feel into this essence of your of your energy there's a lot of doubt and so this is where you're going to go back into your power you're going to fill into your emotions what is your emotion saying to you and ground your energy really really let the light and love of spirit guide you i feel like you um, are talking you're expressing i feel like you're writing things down you're working through your budget but there's some some education or schooling or something here that you're wanting to do so you're also looking at your finances in a way that may take um may be difficult to have your own space if this would make sense love and that's what i'm getting for you um let's see here open for or did i make the right choice was i was it okay casey did i make the right choice was i really it was i really at risk I don't know what you mean by really at risk. Um, right choice. I feel like you let go of something. I feel like you moved on from something, whether this was work or whether this was a place of living. And um, I feel like bringing, bringing healing around family, bringing healing around relationships. Yes. Thank you, Nettie. Thank you. Um, that is what I'm getting for you, love. And so if for whatever reason your spirit felt the need to make that shift, you have to trust your intuition. So I definitely feel um, you followed your guidance. I feel you had a grandmother in spirit who was guiding you. I feel this is on dad's side who was actually nudging you to make the shifts and to create um, the, the adjustments. And so I got to say spirit in spirit world had your back when that happened. Job or love relationship. Hi, Sam. Thank you for being here. Hi, Isabel. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see where else I'm any clarity on a situation going on with the, uh, at the minute do you have more on what situation love jennifer mccormick what situation babe so julie uh julie here spirit spirit i have a father in spirit who's stepping forward who makes me feel like i'm going to my chest i feel like i have breathing issues i feel like i fell i feel like i'm, I'm lo losing oxygen here at some point julie would you understand this because i you welcome casey because this is what's coming to my awareness immediately i know you're saying dad granddad but i definitely feel this guy was a hard worker loved his truck i feel like yeah, i look at my hands i definitely have like pop, like you know rough hands here there's a connection to a steve or a steven as well so whether this is someone who's living i definitely feel i have have to acknowledge that name i don't know if you know um i wanted to say nick or nathan so also that name is also coming yes yes i do he did fall god bless you and so he's coming in immediately for you he's like celebrating you keeping you uplifted and i feel like you've made some positive changes in your life and he's like keep going don't give up so that is the message i get for you sweetheart butterflies are away symbolically in the way spirit comes to you as well and so please trust that and just know that um they're showing me that you have their themes like you know, sometimes we have things and we line them up, but I feel like you also have things lined up as well. And I just got to say, um, the way you keep their life in memory, the way you keep them going uplifted, like they're, they're so grateful um, for you honoring them still. Um, something needs to be fixed in your house. All of a sudden I'm seeing like, um, like the nuts and the screws and I, I'm like in there 
pulling out things. And so they're acknowledging this need to have like a handyman. They're acknowledging this handyman contractor house repairs. So I don't know if you're having house home repairs, but this is the energy that they're bringing forward for you, Julie, if you would understand this. And I just feel like, girl, like, let's have some fun. Like, yes, let's have some fun. It's like this father daughter dance. I feel like, you know, there's this energy, this essence that steps forward. And they make me feel um, a lot of colors that come forward when you see their essence. So I have to acknowledge the colors as well. So yes, my love, I get that for you. They're very much present for you. Um, so I say thank you. Um, I'm going to leave him with his love. He says, don't give up, keep going. So that's the message I get. I um, mean, you're not alone. Um, yes, so true. God bless you. Thank you so much. And then I, I know, see, obviously spirit's still going to come through because they're taking me to like TV and videos and shows and you're replaying their shows and the videos and they love that for you. Okay. So Jennifer, I have been getting lots of downloads lately, but they are confusing. Not sure how to connect deeper to make more sense. Hoping my guides to have something to help me clear this up. We either can get information so quick or we're not understanding what they're saying, right? This is where you either book a session with a medium or a psychic to say, okay, what is it that they're trying to tell me? I know that you are so open and you're going from, from mediums and you're getting the energy here. So it's gonna rev us up. We're in the power all the time. So we're on constantly getting the downloads. We're constantly in the energy and things are constantly moving. So this is where we would ground, ground our energy. Allow our energy to fill into that earth because everything from the different planes need to be present in this energy within the earth, right? And so if you're bringing that forward, it keeps you more, has more of a solid foundation. You're more balanced. You're also able to have all the chakras lined up and everything can flow in a beautiful, harmonious way. Um, when our mind is connecting to the spirits, if you're speaking of spirit to spirit, you're going to also want to do, uh, we want to make sure our thoughts, our energy is in the clear thinking. So we don't want to have have that polluted channel, right? So this is where we would go in for a recce session or you get some energy work or you can do the violet flame within the mind and allow to burn the residue and the debris through your channel and purifying the energy around you so that when you actually make an intent for them to come back with the information, you have a clearer channel and the clearer energy flow. So thank you so much, Jennifer. I hope this makes sense. I say, I leave you with so much love. I've read for you before. You have the gentleman in spirit here who's your loved one. You have, and he loves your car again. He loves the fast car. And I feel like you also have your, um, I feel like mom. I want to go to mom, big hats, like, you know, sitting out there having the the wine. I hear the song, sit in, in the dock of the bay, right? So taking the leap of faith these past few months and been dealing with connecting through sleep. So when we go to sleep, I had a friend who is my shamanic practitioner and you and you give an intent on how to connect to spirit when you sleep. So it's like, OK, you have your journal book, you're putting your journal book right next to you, but also too having this information next to you is to say, um, have a ritual, invite them put an intent. I want you to come to me in my sleep, but work with one person at a time. So you're not bombarded. Okay. So I leave you with their love. Thank you all for holding space. Thank you for being here and just listening to Patty Nagari. Those for who share, thank you for the hearts. Don't forget to follow, find me a medium, Derek Akora's page, Things Network and Sacred Spiral. We're all doing our part to hold space for spirit and community. I heart you all. I wish you nothing but love. And, and, and I, I love this. This is a new saying as Erica, if she's in here, um, Walter McArthur was an astrologist in our Latino culture. So I leave you with lots of love and lots of peace, which he says, mucho paz y amor. Take care and God bless.